Hi there. Let's get started on pattern number two of three for our chunky textured pillow covers. Crochet. This is Bernat Softy Chunky. I just love this. It's very thick and soft. The last pillow, there's 400 grams. The last pillow took 360 grams. So there was a little bit left. I think what I'm going to do with the leftovers is make some granny squares and then see what I can make out of those. Uh, super bulky, six, and this is the color natural, and it coordinates with the chunky textured three color striped blanket that uh, I have free pattern for on my channel and on my website. All right, let's get started. You're going to chain 37, just in case you don't yet know how to make a slip knot. I'm going to, this is how I make one, leave myself a long tail, make a loop with that tail, pull it through. And I'm using a 10 millimeter, as I said, crochet hook, one darning needle with a small eye for uh, sewing the buttons on, one darning needle with a large eye for weaving in your ends, and three one inch buttons. I'm using the same buttons for all three pillows, and I have the link for those a whole set of different uh, buttons that are really cute on my website with where the pattern is and as always just a pair of sharp sharp scissors i'm keeping it a little bit dark in here on purpose so that you can see the stitches all right i have my slip knot let's make a chain of 37. two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. We're almost there. 31, 32, 33, 34, oops, getting fancy there, 35, 36, and 37. It will measure approximately 18 inches. Now, we're going to go into the second chain, the back bump of the second chain. This doesn't count, one chain, two chain, Go to the back bump, and we're going to work double crochets all the way across. This is the same pattern uh, that I used for my blanket. Uh, not going to make stripes. This one will be all one color. Continue going across. You'll end up with 36 double crochets. If you lose your back bumps, turn it back around, find your chain, bring it back around, match your back bump. So all the way across with your double crochets in the back bump only. All right, I'll meet you back here. All right, you should have 36 double crochets in the back bump of your chain, and it should be measuring somewhere around 18 inches, more or less. You can stretch it out a little bit. I apologize if there's some noise in the background. I live on a farm and we're having some tree work done today. All right. Now we're getting into the pattern. At the end of the row, chain one, it's the same exact pattern as the blanket. I'll be 
right back. All right, as I said, it's the same pattern that we had for the chunky textured three color blanket. You're going to make four single crochets, one, in a full stitch, two, whoop, three, four, followed by four front post double crochets. Find your next, there's one, two, three, four. Find the next one, go behind it, pull your yarn through, pull your loop up, even with the others. Pull through two, pull through two. We're gonna do four of those, four front post double crochet. Yeah, you hear the chainsaw in the background. <laughs> Just doing some tree trimming. We have a lot of oaks. They're beautiful, but they need to be trimmed back every now and then. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one more. Go behind that. Pull up even with the other loops. Yarn over. Okay, so continue that all the way down to the end of the row. Four single crochet, four front post double crochet, four single crochet, for front post double crochet. I'll meet you at the end of the row. All right, I wanna give you just a quick tip. If you're not sure where your next single crochet goes, come behind. Count one, two, three, four. That next stitch will be where your single crochet goes after your front post double crochets. And continue on. Okay, I'm on my last stitch of this row. You should have four single crochets at the end of your row. Chain one, turn, this next row, row three, will be all single crochets across. Just make sure that you don't go into that row below. Stay on the top row, start in your very first chain, all single crochets across. It's going to be a repeat of rows two and three the rest of the way. But I will join you at the end of this row and just talk you through how to go through the front post double crochet. All right, at the end of row three, the single crochet row, chain one and turn four single crochet, four front post double crochet, four single crochet. That's our row two. It's going to be row two, row three, row two, row three, until you re reach 42 inches. I just did want to show you now that the double crochet, the front post double crochet, you're getting a little bit longer. You want to come under these horizontal bars and behind that post. Bring your loop up and complete your double crochet. Bringing the loop up helps to keep it from puckering. Let me do that again. There are your horizontal bars. Go under those behind your front post double crochet, bring that loop up, two, three, and four. Oh, I thought maybe they were done. And continue on. As I said, if you're not sure where the next stitch is, come back here, one, two, three, four. It's the next stitch. If you're not sure where your next double crochet goes, count your last ones, one, two, three, four. The next one starts here. One, two, three, four. There's my next single crochet. One, 
two, three, four, if I'm not quite sure which double crochet I come into next, one, two, three, four, it will be this one. Go under. It gets easier and easier. The longer your pattern goes on, you can just feel where to go behind uh, your front posts. So continue that. It's just row two and three. The next row coming back will be all single crochet and then four single, four front post double, four single, all the way until you get to about 42 inches. If you wanna go a little bit further than that, that's great. And you wanna end on a single crochet row, the row three. That will be your, your final row before we do the buttonhole row. All right, I'll meet you back here. All right, so I've decided with this um, second chunky textured pillow cover to make it a lumbar pillow because if you make it the same size as the 20 by 20 uh, to fit the 20 by 20 pillow form you would have to buy another skein of yarn it, this is kind of a yarn eater this pattern and if you're making all three i think it looks really good to have a lumbar pillow in between the other two so it, it works out well. You can still uh, make it bigger if you want to. Go to the 42 inches. You just have to understand that you need more yarn. Mine is right at 26 inches. It's still 18 inches wide. And that's going to fit a 12 inch by 20 inch pillow form. And that will be just perfect. So I ended on... A row three or the single crochet row. I'm going to chain one and we will do our buttonhole row. There we go. All right, go into that first stitch, single crochet. We're going to single crochet nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Chain two. and then come right back into that same stitch and do a slip stitch. And that will be your little buttonhole right there. All right, let's continue. The next nine stitches will be single crochet. One, two, three, four, sorry about that. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, chain two, come back into that same stitch with a slip stitch. And the next stitch, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine. Chain two, come back into that same stitch with a slip stitch. That just locks in your little buttonhole. And the last nine will be single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, chain one, cut your yarn, leave a little tail there big enough, long enough to comfortably weave in, pull through, tighten up, fasten off. There are your buttonholes. All right, I'll be right back. We're going to work on our side seams. Okay, we're ready to sew our side seams. We're gonna, going to overlap wherever you want to. It could be in the middle, it could be further up towards the top, however you want to do this. But make sure that your buttonholes are actually underneath. You have your right sides going together here. So now you're looking at the wrong side. And your buttonholes are going to go under. You can overlap by a couple of inches. Let's find your side seams. The important thing to remember is however far you decided to overlap on one side, make sure you do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, make sure your buttonholes are on the bottom there underneath. You can mark that with a stitch marker or a pin or a piece of yarn if you want to. I have not found the need to do that. Just find your corner and you're going to start your whip stitch there. All right, I made myself a piece of yarn that is approximately four times the width that I'm going to be seaming. That seems to work just about right. I need to retire this needle. I like it because it's nice and bright. I can see it. All right. So just attach it here at the corner. Make sure that you get stitches from both sides. Come all the way through. Tie it two times. Nice and tight. And leave yourself a little bit of a tail to weave in. It just helps so that nothing comes out when you're laundering it or, you know, when the kids are tossing it around. <laughs> you just want it to stay together. So there's your, your whip stitch is just going to be coming from one side to the other. I'm going from the bottom to the top. If you split through the yarn, that's perfectly fine, possibly even preferred because it will help to keep uh, the stitches together. It's not necessary. The only thing that's necessary is to make sure you go through stitches on both sides and try to keep it, oops, hit my camera, sorry, uh, fairly even. If you're going through two stitches on this side, try to go through two stitches on the other side. It's not, not really that big of a deal. We're going to call these seams rustic. <laughs> They're not perfect, they don't have to be. It's a nice chunky pillow cover. All right, continue with that. Just like I said, make sure, however much you want to overlap, When you get to here, make sure you're going through all three thicknesses to get that down and go down to your corner. And there you will tie off, make a knot, leave a tail so you can weave it in. Do the exact same thing on the other side and I'll meet you when we're ready to put our buttons on. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm finishing up my side seam, my second side seam. And to keep yourself 
from having to thread this needle again. Go ahead and tighten that up. I'm going to cut off a good bit of this yarn that I had left. And just go ahead and weave in my ends while I'm here. Just finding some, some tunnels. I'll go in a little bit further since I have plenty of yarn. And then I'll come back, kind of in and out. And one more time. I like to go the opposite way. If I went under, I want to go over. Okay. And please, 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 when you cut this, stay away from your <laughs> crochet stitches. You do not want to cut into your crochet stitches. That would be horrible. I've done it, and it's uh, hard to recover from that. Okay, I'm ready to turn it right side out. All right, when you're turning it right side out, just get those corners. I went ahead while I was at it and wove in all my ends. There weren't very many. I think there were three or four all total. Just kind of push it out. When you put your pillow form in, it, it will be nice and full. All right, and this is why you had the buttonhole edge on the inside. So when you turn it back around, you want your buttonholes on the outside. So let's line up our pattern. So the buttons are going to come just to the other side of your four front post double crochets. Line up where your buttons will go. I'm still deciding. I think I will go with the same buttons. Gives it kind of a minimalist look, Scandinavian kind of look, I guess. and. It will match all of the others. So mark where your buttons will go. And give yourself plenty of yarn so that you only have to, I'm sorry about that, I'm finding some yarn over here. You only have to thread this tiny little eye of this needle that you need to be able to fit through the buttons once. Now, you have a nice long piece. I found the easiest way to thread this very thick yarn through is to separate the three pieces here. And Thread it through your needle, just one piece at a time. Just make sure they're going the right direction. Whatever direction the first one went in, the next one needs to go in that way as well. Uh, it's way, way easier than trying to push that really thick, bulky yarn through. All right, I'll do my last piece and I'll meet you back here. All right. Now all those little ends are on, you can pull it through. 
I made a really long piece because I don't want to have to do that again. So we've decided where our buttons are going. Make sure that you just line them up on the same, same line. I just wanted to show you. Come in from behind. You don't even have to um, go through any of the yarn. You can if you want to. Leave yourself about three inches or, or more. Come through your button. I like to have it going horizontally. Doesn't matter. This makes it easy for me to line it up. Again, just make sure that you're going around something. Don't come through the same hole. Go around something else. Another double crochet there. Or No, I guess that was a single crochet. Go around another. Just make sure you're going around and not through the same hole. All right. Give yourself a few inches. I like to tie it very, very tightly, two times. And then you can come back with your bigger needle and weave in the ends just back and forth here on both sides. And that's really gonna hold it in there nice and securely. Okay, I'll be back when I finish all my buttons. Okay, I have my buttons in place. If you struggle getting the yarn through, or you just prefer, you can certainly use thread. Just use a lot of it. Go through many times. Um, I do prefer to use yarn. You could use a lighter weight yarn, a, a thinner yarn that's the same color, or that goes well with your buttons. But I find that if I split the yarn, which I only learned recently. <laughs> Trial and error. All right. Uh, full disclosure, I had to order a pillow cover because I just, I changed my mind while I was making this to make it a lumbar pillow and it won't be here until tomorrow. So I will come back tomorrow with uh, the pillow form inside the pillow. I think you're really going to like this one. It is thick and cushy. All right, I'll be back when I receive my pillow form. Please like and subscribe and hit the notification button, that little bell, if you want to find out when the next pillow cover is coming. <laughs>